Hello everybody and welcome to another RCT2 review stream. Uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, we are going to review uh, a couple of the entries in uh, the Dirklink monthly ride contest. Um, so uh, Dirklink's server, uh, or Discord server, has a uh, number of contests that he hosts each month. And uh, last month was a bobsled contest. Make the best bobsled and there was a couple other requirements as far as buildings go and things like that. Um, there's a ton of entries, something like 28 or 29, something around there. Actually, it might have been in the 30s even. Um, but uh, you rank them. Uh, anybody could vote, and they voted on the coaster out of 10, and then the rest of the area out of 10. So those two averaged together gave the, the score for... Um, one particular user and then everybody's scores were averaged high and low dropped and that was the final score so what i wanted to do is go through my personal top six and uh, kind of run through them and why i like them as i do um there was also a request to go through the um some of the other ones also and i think i'm going to do that in stream form and i'll post about it in Derklink's discord ahead of time um so uh, you can check that out if you'd like to be a part of that. Um, I will also post in the description below um, the link to Dirklink server uh, and also his YouTube channel where he has gone through and reviewed all of these entries um, uh, before opening. So let's uh, jump in. Uh, I am doing my top six of these in total. Um, only six because the uh, four, five, and six were a tied score, uh, a score of 8.5 out of 10. Uh, so let's uh, jump in. This is uh, Emil's uh, entry. Uh, so we have our bobsled here, Timber, which uh, is a wooden bobsled, so flying turns. Uh, actually, a number of the entries did uh, this kind of a bobsled. Um, Dirk Link's server, you should be aware, is no custom scenery, but also includes the expansion pack, so kind of halfway custom scenery, I suppose. Um, so that's RCT2, Wacky Worlds, and Time Twisters. Um, but there's a lot of pretty cool hacking tricks and everything that everybody are, is using over there and uh, does some pretty neat stuff uh, with it. But uh, this is a great looking layout. Um, bobsleds are kind of difficult to build because A, you have a lot of limited objects, and B, there's not too much you can do to get a very distinctive bobsled layout. So S-bends are kind of a nice way to indicate a little bit of um, kind of slight turns, but you really don't want hills. You don't want uh, crests and things like that. You want to really do all of your movement with corners, which I think is done really well here. The great looking layout, very realistic, or at least feels kind of so as far as uh, older style bobsleds go. You can kind of see it weaving through the structure here. And a nice custom structure at that uh, using the uh, wood post object uh, on the side. I think it's it's nicely done. Um, nice uh, little area here to break run. We have our transfer track. Um, three trains on here, which um, you could use three trains because you do have a mid-course brake run, but this brake run needs to be longer. It would need to be double that uh, realistically, so something to consider. Um, around the rest of the map here, we have a nice uh, shoestrung boomerang. Boomerang, clever. A um, little bit small. Um, it's definitely, as far as realism goes, a little bit lacking in that department. Uh, supports are cool, a little beefy, but very nicely done. And... Um, then there's a number of other rides in here, like this uh, packed train that kind of circles around and then goes through the station and then circles around again. And then this custom uh, here, uh, Vomit Comet, a little spinning ride, double-decker spinning ride, which is pretty cool. I like how one goes one direction and the other goes another direction. Um, and then some architecture on the whole is pretty nice. Actually, this building is one of my favorites, really liking this. Uh, Jeff's Kitchen, which uh, with these two kind of or three uh, pointed entries, and then they have the curved uh, one at the side. Uh, I love this blue in this instance. I'm not as much of a fan of the water. It's a little bit dark for me. I prefer the regular RCT water, but not too bad. Um, landscaping is pretty well done, and just a lot of nice details throughout. Um, as far as, you know, some detractions go, it's uh, there's some little realism things here and there. I mean, the arrow launch loop for one, the... Um, transfer track here but there's a lot of other stuff i mean nice little uh details here like the little dumpster and um all the little bits and pieces here's like a little haunted house uh thing and um uh but on the whole pretty nice overall 
Um, some weird objects, perhaps. I don't like the smoke object at all. It just doesn't fit with the rest of the um, uh, kind of shading and aesthetic of the, the rest of the stuff, including this pathway right here. It's nice and bright, but it also doesn't quite fit with the rest. So it stands out just a bit. But, you know, on the whole, very nice, and I think deserving of that 8.5 score. So up next, also with 8.5, is uh, Oven Wood. And we're going to take a look at a pretty unique wooden coaster here, this bobsled. So this is Double Dave. Double Dave. I think it's fun. Um, it's pretty clever. Um, dueling throughout, kind of stacked lift hills, um, but then it splits apart and then comes together with this opposing helix, uh, but they're both stacked. And I just really, really like it. I think it's super well done. It's a clever idea. Um, it's using the block breaks very well to time the dispatches of all of these um, these rides. So watch this uh, green and red since we kind of missed that first one. So here we go. This helix is just super cool, the way that it crosses each other right there. A little bit hard to see with the supports, but the supports are neat. A little, a little beefy in some cases and uh, a little bit solid in some spots, but not too bad. I think that's on the whole pretty well done. And uh, proper... I suppose, let's see, three trains, proper amount of break run there, so that's always good. Um, the sliding track, though, you, you want another piece on the side, so then this last track could fully slide over there, but, you know, small small comments, I would say. So, custom rides outside of the coaster. We've got this pretty impressive uh, uh, shoestring ride here called Aviator that's got our control tower uh, here in the station area, and then this uh, plane on top, so very neat on that regard. And then this guy, Dreamcatcher, is a uh, sort of custom boomerang, which I kind of like. I mean, it's not super realistic per se, but I mean, they couldn't put it past like a Japanese manufacturer to have done this in the 80s or something like that. So I, I like it. I think it's a clever idea. Um, and the custom supports are always nice. Overall is used very well with the interaction and everything there. And then scenery-wise, again, pretty uh, nice architecture. Um, this building is pretty cool with the curve here and then a couple other pieces. A lot of layering, but not too, too much. I think that can be a detriment at some point is too much layering. But I like um, this little um, uh, pond area here where we have our boat, this just little kind of scenic, uh, scenic bit here, and then these coverings on all four sides in different colors, kind of pulling the primary colors from each of the different areas. Um, the as far as the coloration goes of all this, I think it's very well done. And then this super cool double-headed snake. I mean, that's really neat the way that this wraps up and around. I like the uh, the coaster car or train on here. I mean, it's it's over the top. It's not like it's something a real park would do, but it's pretty cool and uh, and neat. What I would say is that this probably ought to be over top of the entrance instead. It's sort of on this side, which is a really great setup. I would almost make the entrance to this coaster over here instead. But um, pretty impressive nonetheless, and uh, pretty cool to see. Um, a little bit cramped. I, I think that's one of the challenges for um, some of these contest entries, is really it's good practice not to have um, rides and stuff go right up against the side of the map, um, but you kind of don't have a choice when it's a little small like this. Landscaping is is okay. It's um, a little bit much on some of the um, the shrubs. It's a little homogenous, perhaps, but not too bad overall. Um, so I, I would say I'm a pretty big fan. So not too bad. And then this is a neat little crane here with the wood pieces bringing bringing all those in. So very nicely done. All right. So next up we have. Uh, LXRSDV, I don't know how I was supposed to pronounce that differently, but so it goes. Uh, so this one doesn't look like much to begin with, but what really boosted this for me is this was my only 10 on the voting for the coasters. This is, in my opinion, the best coaster in the contest. Um, done really, really well. So another um, kind of hybrid one. It almost looks like a steel, um, steel bobsled, but we have the wooden track throughout. Um, so using our nice little three car trains here, but this is what a bobsled is all about as far as shaping goes, really just using the corners for everything. You'll notice there's no hills. There's this little up into the brake run here, which is well placed, uh, kind of a third of the way through. 
Uh, and then we have this whole second half that just has these really great helixes. We're alternating large and small, and um, we're not going too, too fast for the small ones. Uh, you don't want it really shoved up against the side. Um, but then we have, like, we're, we're not just going down. We have the uphill here, and um, I have this one in this direction, then this one back the other direction, and then this one back in the other direction. It's just really, really well done alternating the... Uh, the kind of direction that you're going and alternating the up and the down um and then combine that with some great support work uh throughout i think this was just really really well done overall um i was a big fan of it so uh, this is um my pick for the best one in the contest you know surroundings are sparse but not too bad the uh, structure here is is pretty nice this burger grill and then the station itself i do like these little flags those are, are kind of nice even though they're a little bit beefy they're a little big um park map little sign here and then this uh train bridge coming through is kind of neat with these arches on either side and then the sort of the uh, structure on either end um kind of framing out some different pieces and then just little details like the fire under here and the the scenery rowing boat and everything like that so i mean it, it's kind of not much on first glance but the coaster itself was just really spectacular and in my opinion boosted this to um uh, to a pretty pretty good score overall so um well done uh, as far as the layout goes um really enjoyed looking through this one all right, let's move along. So next up are uh, nine scores. I have two of them at uh, score nine. So first one we'll look at is Mechit. Uh, so this one is um, kind of a little more wild than the other couple that we've looked at so far. This is a little more fantasy, but uh, still with a reasonably realistic coaster. Uh, not too bad. Again, an interesting take on the supports here. Um, wooden coaster, but uh, a generally nice layout. Um, probably one complaint is that the helixes are all about the same um, thing. They're all the small ones, so small, small stacked, small here with a little bit of a larger one. That's probably the nicest one, and then just small and then large. You generally kind of want to adjust that every now and then, so maybe go uh, small into a large out or something like that just to give it a little bit of variation through there but on the whole this is nice but the coaster itself kind of seems like a backseat to the the rest of the scenery and everything else throughout um pretty good overall it does need a longer break run we are we're running four trains here um which i think we're running blocks we should be yeah block section mode this whole strip should be a break run for one uh, it looks like we've got two blocks under here but then this should be a full one there now we don't have a transfer track but that's that's fair or at least we don't as far as i could see but pretty darn cool station though with the upturned boat um really impressive uh design there and then these two ships out in the water are just fabulous with the uh barrel on either side um and then the uh the sails and everything now the what seemed to kind of differentiate uh or, or separate folks as far as score goes is the use of these mayan ruins as the rocks um, I don't like the texture to begin with because I, I think the expansion packs are trash, <laughs> just being honest, but, um, the, I, the, the implementation here, I think is pretty well done. Um, I really kind of like how it works as far as just, uh, a good alternative to the in-game rock work. And I like this kind of striations here throughout the way that that's stacked. And then this little bit of cutaway here of this building, the buildings themselves can, um, blend a little bit so we're using the um these the castle uh like little village houses here kind of stacked together with the big roof of, over top uh not a bad design and i think it's it's a good way to do this and probably the best uh, execution of something like this but you do get a little bit lost in the texture in some of these things like i can't really pick out key features of the building per se but um you know you can't deny the the boldness of using this kind of a um this kind of an object choice and just you know how well it's done and on the back side here we have this uh huge guardian uh creature thing which is pretty impressive and then down below we have our uh um shaman and just all the uh, things down here in the cave so very well done um, custom palette here used to advantage. I mean, it's a little 
brown and gray, of course, but there's enough landscaping and then enough of the water that it really looks good. And then I do kind of like the waterfall on either side here. And then as far as details go, I think it's a clever idea to back two water coaster boats up against each other and then create that as a little ship. So nicely done there. We will move along to Swag TDs and uh, this coaster and park, which uh, is probably the most realistic of all the ones that we're going to look at today. Um, really, really nicely done. So the coaster itself is more or less uh, a similar layout to the original Intamin um, bobsled or um, bobsled type layout. So the Intamin ones were the single vehicle like this that could seat either um, two in line for six total uh, or um, two across, three deep for six total. It depends on which which park it was um, that went that way. So Six Flags Over Texas still has the inline ones, and Great Escape Park in New York has uh, the side-by-side. -side. But um, pretty nice layout here. Um, good details, like the uh, little monorail up top here is the operator booth. Uh, we have a couple of blocks here. Uh, we're not running block sections, but I can forgive that for couple of reasons. Um, so dispatch timing here is set so that we're never going to actually stack up and have more more vehicles in one block than uh, they should. Um, but secondly, so this is sort of like a moving station almost, um, just in the way that the, the station parking is set up on the real thing. So it works better like this. You could you could kind of hide that if you wanted to run blocks and have like an unload and a load station. And I think it would look about the same, but I can understand this choice. Um, nice choice too on the transfer track here, so that's good. But then let's talk about the surrounding details. I think that's really where this one shines. Um, just this facade here, this whole section of facades is just absolutely fantastic. Uh, really, really great architecture throughout. Uh, nice uh, porches on either side here, and a variation. You don't really want a flat facade, even if it is a long string of the same kind of buildings. I mean, we're bumping out here, coming back in. This does a diagonal, this has a curve, you've got some signs here. We have different buildings that are using similar materials and uh, pieces, but they're distinct. So like this one's the green building, this one's blue, this one's yellow. You've got a nice little tower on the side. Then you got the kind of these wings of the green building here that just look really nice. Um, and then the use of just the seating here on the balcony. So you're actually giving the balcony a function, which is great. Um, you really want to think about your theming and how the guest is going to interact and experience it. You can kind of assume that this is like a little restaurant here and might have a staircase up the back that you could use this uh, for. Um, on the back side, it's kind of neat because this is uh, hiding a show building for the train here. So this is the uh, Doc's Time Machine uh, train that's going to come through here and uh, go through a couple of different areas. We have like the little Roman area. Here's a medieval one, Wild West, and then Oriental. Um, this is super cool, super cute. Uh, I really like how it transitions between all the areas just really smoothly with these little bit of uh, landscape transitions. Um, and it packs a lot in a really small space. And I think that's uh, that's pretty strong because you really, it only takes a couple of tiles here to convey what you're looking at. I mean, the piece of this Coliseum here, a couple of little buildings here that really convey that just this one saloon building and then the pagoda here with the um, with the water around it i mean that's just super super pretty i'm a huge fan of that so really really nice overall and then the the train kind of pops out down here and then you know magically appears on this side and then finishes up the layout on that side cool out the sign it's pretty nice um a lot of the times the signs and the these sort of no custom scenery things get a little bit bulky and the detail is interesting, but they also just are huge when you compare them to the peep scale. Honestly, to me, a sign shouldn't really ever be more than two tiles across. Um, and then otherwise, it gets a little bit too big. So um, it's it's definitely that balance. I mean, you can do the things with no custom scenery, but um, sometimes it gets a little bit too bulky and may not quite be worth it. Um, but there are some other nice little features here, like using the monorail, uh, the suspended monorail for the curbs on uh, the pathways here we're using a couple of different features here if you get rid of this you can kind of see all the different uh, um, custom kind of hacked pathways here they give it just a little bit of texture make it look a little bit worn uh, which i think is very nice uh, bumper cars here kind of stand out on their own a little bit don't quite have the same level of uh, of care as that one but 
uh, nicely done overall. And then I'm a huge fan of these uh, curved um, uh, kind of umbrella bits using the uh, the car ride and then also the miniature golf course. I think those are nicely done throughout. So honestly, this one is just clean. It's really well done. It's not gimmicky as far as, uh, you know, custom or no custom scenery tricks and things like that. It, it does everything in a really clean manner. It just looks good. And the composition is there as far as pathway goes. We're not over utilizing path. We're not um, cramming things in in a way that really shouldn't be. So I, I'm a huge fan of this one. I think it was done very, very well. And um, there's a good kind of textbook example of cleanliness and good design in uh, in CSO building. But we have one more, and this is uh, my top score. This got a 9.5 overall. So this is Scorpion. Um, and we have a pretty uh, unique coaster here, but still reasonably realistic. It kind of reminds me of Hyde Park's um uh, bobsled so this is uh schweitzer bob on uh it does call out this is a mock ride which you know looking at the trains here so the trains here we have five trains running seven cars per train which is correct uh six or seven is correct uh so we're going to come off this first lift hill with a nice little section here into a uh mid-course break and then we'll get our uh, second section here which kind of has this neat helix that sort of tightens down as you go around it and then opens up to this secondary mid-course break here. We've just cleared that first one for this train coming down. Then this one comes through. So following that red train there, we've got another big helix tightening down, and then we're gonna go inside underneath this uh, area here, which I kind of would think of this as a dark ride section almost, behind the waterfall, kind of popping out here briefly, and then coming out into this other break run here. We'll get this one clear just in time for the green train to get here. So we're keeping the trains moving pretty well. Um, they probably don't need this many blocks as far as just loading goes, but I think it's a pretty clever way to uh, pump a lot of trains through. Um, and brake run wise, it's it's substantial because you kind of start down here. You've got the secondary lift hill. You've got a brake run here, a couple of brakes along here, and then the station itself. Uh, one comment that I would make is we've got uh, five or no, four maybe? four spots for trains down here which is fine if you're running a five car or five train ride you can have you know one less transfer track spot if you want or the same amount it's okay but there's two trains sitting down here already so that means there's seven trains in total so that i think is one of the mistakes but i would um you know that's an honest mistake but either run all your maximum trains and don't have any in the transfer track or run slightly less than you can and put a couple down there if you want the nice detail of having a coaster on your transfer track but anyway uh really cool layout i like that it's non-traditional but it's still realistic and then let's look at the actual architecture so really nice um uh or a mountainous type architecture almost a lot of a lot of brick, a lot of wood, um, and then sort of the white and brown playing off of each other. Uh, really, really liking this uh, facade here, screening the uh, break run. I think that's just super, super well done. Nice little sign here for the entrance uh, and the queue. Uh, I like the black queue line as you walk through here. Good view of the ride itself. And then just the way that all this landscape runs through here, all these uh, water throughout. Uh, scissor lift parked here, pretty clever design like that. A uh, nice building down here that kind of gets cut off, and then we have a covered um, walkway up uh, up to the top here. Uh, this is kind of neat. This little uh, uh, mine uh, mine cart sign for Vroot, um, which is up underneath here. So a little dark ride up underneath. This is another complaint that I would have though, is we have this nice drop tower on top, uh, two SNS drop towers here, um, but. There's a dark ride underneath of it. Where does the foundation go? So you really want to avoid putting things directly under a ride like this because there'd be a pretty substantial ride foundation up underneath. So uh, just something to consider, I think, for future uh, work. But taking these as a separate deal, this is super cool underneath. I love this. Uh, like this little uh, dip down here over the suspension bridge and the waterfall up underneath. And then uh, the way that these barrels are creating this archway. And then you have the couple of... Uh, ENT down here. So nice little dark ride, but a lot of fun. A lot of really cool designs there. The drop towers are interesting, being that one is taller than the other one, but um, 
nice enough. Uh, well done uh, on some of the details there, operator booth, and then uh, just the various bits and pieces with the queue line, and then some of the details throughout. So uh, nicely done. I like that a lot. I think probably from park layout, the one consideration that I would make is that this is a big square with a pathway all the way around it. Really, that's not the way you want to go park making wise. Um, you want to kind of build your path through the space and then work your ride around it. So you almost rather than surrounding the path with ride or, or surrounding the, the ride with path, you kind of want to go the opposite. You would almost want to cut a pathway through the middle here and then have the ride work on one side and then the uh, other rides kind of work on the other side and then interact a little bit with that path. Right here, you kind of box it out and you kind of would imagine this, if you looked at this as a larger park, you wouldn't want to see another ride here boxed out by path, ride here boxed out by path. So it's just a consideration. And granted, this is a cut of a smaller park, at least, at least as far as the overall design is shown, but you really want to have something to see on both sides of the path. You don't you don't really want to leave the rest of this kind of unknown on the on the sides. But I mean, I feel like that's a small small quibble for what is an otherwise pretty excellent ride with some great support work, uh, just a nice flowing layout, um, reasonably realistic, um, and then a lot of nice architecture and just other details throughout. So definitely a really great competition and. Um, and there was a lot of really high entries and um, a lot of things that I really wish I could have shown in here, but I kind of wanted to leave it as my top five, which ended up being six, because otherwise I could just keep on going. A big shout out to Robbie Hood for uh, winning this contest. I know I didn't showcase his here, but he was actually the next one up if I would have gone to seven. So um, I will definitely look at that one during the stream, and I highly recommend you go download and take a look at that and all the entries. There's a lot of really great work out there um, and uh, some pretty cool stuff. If you want to enter those contests, you just got to join your Clank server and uh, then follow the instructions there. And uh, you can, you too can enter your uh, ride or map for the monthly contest. Right now they're doing a new one, and then they'll have another in September and so on. Uh, but that's all we've got for today. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I will provide links to all this stuff in the description so you can go find your way to these. Um, and then if you uh, would like to see something in particular, just let me know in the comments and um, then we'll, uh, we'll get to it. But until next time, thank you very much for watching and uh, have a great day.